I, I don't know but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels I just saw an anointing rest on you this role in the name of Jesus I don't know where you are but I pray may that grace now let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ welcome to Christocentric message on this channel you are going to get soul lifting messages faith based content prayer drills and videos that would help you grow spiritually remember to subscribe to the channel like the video you are about to watch and comment on it stay blessed Great. blessed be your name honor you can you lift your hands and bless him just bless him shabala kuparusa tabariata Bless his name, he is worthy of all the praise, worthy of all the glory. Hallelujah. Let's hold hands together and just pray in the spirit in one minute. Everyone, hold hands together. Shalabrato Supaka. Hold hands together. Zike prarusa sebra digi baratu soso prahata kataya. Please take it serious. Make sure you are praying inside, outside. Mande la kapros kapre ashi behere to supre tiara. Every time spent in your presence brings with it transformation. Brings with it light. Kabato zata predeke shi prahata baria da balada bos. Ninda kapraska da barike to shibredi aladabos. Pray in the spirit. Lika taro saderianda kapariada. Release the power and the grace. Kela tu shebrandizia. Ligeto pratoza sibredi gede gede baladabos. Embroto soto kata barada baladabaka sada brede gede gede baladabos. Jige dege 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 de kaparoto soprendi gara balarabosh impratos kaprato shakate prosata labarite kosi gete balata inte katorato zekete keria da balarosh ingre dosuzo bakata balarabare to kosu preti gedi balaraba manda kata prata kata parada parada balada bakaria de balarabosh zekete kete kete balarabosh. Embroto so so prekete kete 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 balarabos. Zapra to kato prate sekete le bokorit. Embra du so so prekete barada balaraba. Shakata prata kata rada balaraba. Lika to prasibad yarabos. Keep praying. Lika pras kabaranda bash kabrateke so bariate balaraba. Alleluia. Alleluia. Father, visit me tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Visit me tonight. Change my life. Visit me tonight in the name of Jesus. Jaka parato ko parado shaprete kete la baroto subaya. Likete proto sobrete kete barada baladaba. Strange visitations by the Spirit. Lepro sada barato ko tu baladaba. Hallelujah. 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 Last prayer point. Every spirit of distraction, every spirit of familiarity, every spirit of carelessness in the presence of God that will make me miss my word tonight, I challenge you in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. Some of you are not praying. Open your mouth and pray. Shalabako prata Lord, I will not be careless with your word.
Hallelujah. 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 Good evening, everybody. The Lord will change your life in a remarkable way this night. In the name of Jesus. Greet someone by your left and right and please sit down and be ready to write and listen. God wants to speak to us seriously this night. Hallelujah. God wants to speak to us seriously tonight. I truly believe that tonight's meeting is a destiny encounter. But every meeting is a destiny encounter. But particularly tonight, my heart is heavy to just offload a lot of very serious things this night. Hallelujah. I love it when God puts it in my heart to challenge our lives and our destinies. Tonight's talk is a very serious talk and I want you to pay attention. Don't just write, listen and receive. Amen. Someone is changing this night. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the coal, touch my lips, here I am. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the coal, touch my lips, here I am. Would you take the coal, touch my lips, here I am. Take the coal, touch my lips, here I am. Spirit of the living God, speak to your people. You have instructed this meeting and you have brought a word tonight. Someone's destiny is dependent on this word. There are people following online. There are people listening there are thousands and millions more that will listen after tonight. I pray, oh God, that you will put your anointing and your grace upon this teaching. May it not be trivialized, oh God. I pray that you activate destinies in a strange way tonight. In the name of Jesus, answer the questions that are in the hearts of your people. Release the anointings that they desire for the next level of their lives. Lord, we thank you for people here who are sick oppressed who are here just trusting you for a touch some do not even know what the name of their issues are but i pray that they will receive a touch from god tonight in the name of jesus christ god bless you ecclesiastes 10 15 ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 jesus we bless you It's always a pleasure to bring God's word. And every time the word of God comes, it comes not just to challenge us, but to change us. If you are not changed by the word, listen, if the word of God cannot change you, then nothing else can change you. Are we together? Because the word of God created the heavens and the earth. Praise the Lord. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 15 read it slowly read it intelligently read it with understanding one to read ah no 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 slowly doesn't mean quietly one to read he never said the labor of the foolish whereas some of them would have found out why some escaped but he says the labor of the foolish the problem is not the labor. The problem is those who are laboring. There is a condition. The Bible says the labor of the foolish. Does what? Weary yet every one of them. Why? Because he knoweth not. That's what makes him foolish. Because he does not know how to go to the city. 
there is a way to go to the city there is a formula to go to the city listen please there is a system that can take a man from where he is to his place in destiny and the bible says the foolish and the wise do the same thing seemingly they are all laboring but then the bible says it wearied every one of them and this is why it worries them it says they do not know how it did say they do not know the name of the city they know what they want they know where they want to go to but the system the system to take them from where they are to where they need to be you know i've said it again and again that believers are not confused as to the outcome of their lives what they want we all know what we want or at least we have an idea the challenge usually is the understanding of what it will take to leave us from where we are to where we need to be and i pray that god will open our eyes in the name of jesus write this word down destiny write this word down destiny destiny the word destiny is a very interesting word there's almost no man of god who has not spoken about this word we love it so much we dream about it we discuss it but the bible says listen please that there is a path listen there is a path that seemeth right but then it says the end thereof are the ways of death are we together now the word destiny simply means your predefined place of fulfillment write it down please i'll give you a few definitions quickly your predefined place of fulfillment predefined means that you do not guess in the loins of prophecy and in the loins of time there is a place allocated for you please listen there is a place in destiny there is a place in prophecy allocated for each and every one of us and your fulfillment and your relevance in life is tied to not only your discovery but your arrival you there is a condition there is a place where you must arrive to be able to find the joy and the fulfillment of living it's called destiny the second definition of destiny is the place where your assignment finds full expression your destiny represents the place where your assignment your purpose on earth your reason for living your destiny represents the place where you can say experientially that i am living the reason for which i am born i am making impact number three i went ahead of myself the third definition of destiny is the place of notable and consistent impact the place of notable and consistent impact no longer the place of desire no longer the place of ambition that you have gotten to a place where your impact is notable your impact is significant the last definition of the word destiny destiny also represents a place where you have and the right to transform lives and to watch those lives transform others not just that you are transforming lives you are fulfilling destiny to the extent to which you have earned the right to transform lives and you have the privilege in your lifetime of watching those lives you have transformed transform others hallelujah 
Dr. Miles Munro of Blessed Memory. A man who has changed my life so much I honor him in life and in death. He said this. He said, The greatest tragedy in life is not death. The greatest tragedy in life is a life without a purpose. A life without a meaning. A life without a reason for living. That you get up in the morning and there is no constructive definition as to what justifies your living. There are so many people angry and frustrated in life. Listen please. We attempt to cover the need for activating and fulfilling destiny with many things. We try education. And then, you know, after many years of laborious study, we don't seem to make sense out of our sacrifice. We try marriage. And for many people, it's hell. They are living in hell, literally. We try money. We try several things in an attempt to get to that place. But it doesn't seem to bring that fulfillment and satisfaction. And many people in Nigeria in their old age are full of regrets, are full of pain, anointed people inclusive. So tonight I want to challenge us. There's nothing that gives me joy as seeing an individual or a people. Listen please, living a life of purpose and a life of meaning. Your need for the anointing is useless without an understanding of destiny. Your need for financial prosperity, your need for a wife or a husband, your need for children, your need for influence is absolutely useless if you do not understand God's idea of destiny. Say there is a place for me in life. I want you to shout it with conviction. Listen, there is no man born of a woman. I know you've heard it, but listen to it with an anointing on it. There is no man born of a woman regardless of the conditions that surrounded your birth dr miles munro said there may be illegitimate parents but there are not there may be illegitimate relationships but there are no illegitimate children the concept of an illegitimate child is just a sociocultural term it does not exist there's no such thing as an illegitimate child are we together everybody that appears on this earth appears for a reason intentionally allowed to come nobody listen nobody has the power in himself to just fabricate a child and bring him in this realm are we together now so every one of us seated here and those following and listening we have a place in life and destiny but so many people never get to discover it so many people never get to live in the reality. In fact, it's, it's cheaper to not even discover it than to discover it and never actualize it in your lifetime. You can justify your pain by saying, I never had a, an opportunity to know. But then it's painful when you know that this is the prophetic blueprint of my life. And then you never get to live it. Are we together? There is no one sent here on earth by mistake. You just arrive and then you say, Lord, why am I here? And God will say, ah, sorry, oh, let's check. Why is he here exactly? No, 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 no. We can choose to refuse to become the prophecy upon our lives. We can reject God's program for our lives and create another program by ourselves. But anyone who will find fulfillment, especially in this end time, there are men and women who must align to the purposes of the kingdom. Listen, you are not here to create a program for yourself. You are here to walk in a program that has been predestined. Are we together? Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 5. He was speaking to a little boy called Jeremiah. Revealing to him his prophetic destiny. This was a little boy who was destined to be a prophet. To speak the purposes of God over nations. And here he was having an encounter with the Lord. And then he was receiving a download of the blueprint. What he would live for. What he would die for. And here's what he says. Before I formed thee in the belly. I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and I did what ordained thee a prophet to the nations so on on 
Jeremiah's day of birth Jeremiah's mother would have held him and looked at him and said wow little child very helpless but in the loins of prophecy that was a prophet when you read further it begins to reveal the extent of his prophetic influence how that he was vested with the responsibility of not only speaking God's counsel to individuals but to kings to nations to nobles it was up to Jeremiah to never fulfill that there was a man in the Bible called Elisha and the Bible tells us that Elisha was a farmer but in that farmer was a prophet a prophet who would do mighty things he would have died a farmer because he did not know the road to the city but something happened in his life may you find the road map to your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ let me tell you you see jealousy look up please jealousy resentment huh? all of this criticism backbiting are a direct product of the confusion usually when we meet a stumbling block on our road to destiny and we are surrounded by all kinds of vagueness and confusion that idleness in our confusion will make us to turn and when you see another life walking with a level of dexterity and accuracy it usually will create a reaction that reaction is what we call resentment that reaction is what we call criticism are we together now so it's not about saying stop criticizing people you have to be too busy in your idleness you there is nothing else to do but when you find something that occupies you the time span air mark for you will look too short the, a sense of urgency will drive you like a madman are we together now everyone has a destiny in christ hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 jesus who was a portrait of our life the firstborn among the many brethren in the similitude of our life said this said lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will O god lo i come this is why i came when jesus showed up no confusion he understood exactly the blueprint of his life when he went to the temple in luke chapter 4 the bible says it was given to him the scroll of Isaiah, the prophecy that isaiah prophesied about him and then he began to read the spirit of the lord is upon me because this and that and that look at a little boy at age 12 he had discovered his assignment already was about at the temple studying and preparing for a great destiny to an extent that he told his parents he said ah, do you not know are you no longer uh, um, well not bible students but do you no longer go to the temple to hear the prophecy mary have you forgotten i thought you said the angel spoke to you why are you questioning my zeal to fulfill the reason for which i was born 33 and a half years and he made an impact with his life that for eternity we will never recover truly truly i believe in long life but sincerely speaking it's not how long you live but how effective there is a way a man's one year can become someone else's lifetime and impact in one year can be so transgenerational jesus died at 33 and a half or a quarter years old but out of that 33 years only three years were used in active ministry are we together lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me tonight i want to share with us on the requirements for manifesting your destiny that's not a topic it's just what i want to do now the requirements the cost dimension many of us are aware i'm not so much about the discovery as it is manifesting it I've, I've done a teaching discovering your purpose you can get it and several other teachings along the um, the lines of destiny but tonight the lord put it in my heart to teach us there is a system everybody say there is a system you're not going to walk to to your place of destiny just um by default nothing works in life until you walk it nothing moves in life until you move it right newton's first law of mechanics 
nothing will move until you move it you sit down the way you are nothing will change you will grow older the only thing that will change is your age you are celebrating 35 36 then you jump to 47 48 but your life is not moving do you know my concept of birthdays i truly believe in celebrating birthdays but birthday is not just the fact that you were born in my opinion birthdays should be celebrated only when purpose is discovered and is being lived you truly do not have a right you have a right to thank god for being born but you have no right to celebrate your birthday what are you celebrating you should celebrate the reason for living if your life is so impactful you will not even be the one celebrating you would have blessed people too much they will be too grateful to leave you when you have to call everybody and remind them ha ah, hey, Jimmy Abba, you mean you, you, are, you are just remembering that it's my birthday it's a message read the writings on the wall your life is not notable enough there are people they prepare for their birthdays one year as soon as they finish one they start what do I do for him for all that he has done in my life some of us harass people we have never invested in their lives two weeks to my bed they said just to let you know that it's my birthday and you send a general bulk message again reminder and then out of those 200 people maybe only two or three it's a message it's not for you to be angry it's a sign that your life is not blessing anybody notably let me tell you no matter how dark and depraved people are when you bless their lives they become too grateful to not notice it Is God speaking to us? I want to share with you some strong requirements. You must be determined to not just succeed but fulfill your destiny. My concept of success is fulfilling your assignment. Not just moving forward. Not just getting married. Not just finishing school. Not just getting a job or a promotion or a raise. All those things are periphery. The, the truth is, listen, listen, let me tell you. If you do not find out God's goal for your life and you are not living it, you are wasting your time and you are wasting the time of others. Amen. Are we together? I'd like you to pray a prayer before we go into the details of the requirement and say, Lord, any price for my destiny, I receive grace to pray it. Lift your voice. If you are not ready, you don't have to pray. You won't go to hell. But be sure that you are not going to rise. Any price for my destiny. Lord, I'm tired of living my life carelessly. I'm growing older. Time is going. There's nothing that is giving my life meaning. As I listen to your word now. Lord, if it will sting me, let it sting me. But my heart, my mind, my spirit is open. Let no price be too great, O oh God, for my destiny. Let no price be too great for my destiny. Are you praying? Lord, there is an anointing upon my life the nations must drink from. There is no price that is too great. Make sure you are praying. Don't be careless tonight. You are about to hear something that will change your life. Some of you change your lineage because of you through you you've been complaining about what has happened now god is giving you a choice to make a decision that probably your parents did not make lord let pain let pain not stand my way to greatness give me grace to conquer pain give me grace to conquer shame hallelujah let's write number one requirement to fulfilling your god-given destiny the first requirement is an encounter with jesus a genuine encounter with jesus not coming out for an altar call that's important but an encounter with Jesus. John 7. When you read John 7. 
John 3, I'm sorry, verse 7. Actually, it's 3 to 7. John chapter 3. The encounter that Nicodemus had with Jesus. Now, understand this. The context of that scripture is very interesting. Because Nicodemus was a teacher of the law. Nicodemus was a doctor. He was a philosopher. He was intelligent. He was a graduate. He was even employed. Nicodemus was not a small man. He was a man of influence. But every time together with his colleagues they kept insulting jesus castigating jesus but they were secret fears and frustration nicodemus got to a point where his life was not making sense and then he sneaked in by night and came to jesus and then he says rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him and then jesus said verily verily i say unto you right he said except ye be born again you shall not see the kingdom of god now he, he begins to talk how can i be born again will i enter into my mother's womb and then verse 5 he now says um you know verily verily i say unto you except ye be born of the water and of the spirit then you cannot enter the kingdom right then jesus now begins to speak and all of that and says the wind blow it where it listed verse 7 that's where i'm really going to verse 7 this is what he said marvel not that i say unto you ye must be born again it didn't say ye may it didn't say ye should being born again is not an advice being born again is a requirement writing jam is not an advice writing jam is a requirement having five credits no story is not an advice are we together is the necessary and sufficient condition to gain admission let me tell you life has requirements there is a cut off point the starting point is born again it's amazing how many people want to walk with god but they don't want to be born again they want to be around church they want to be around the things of god they want to have christian names being born again is more than just confessing jesus being born again is prioritizing god that God becomes your obsession, your priority, and your motivation. There's no hope of leaving him. That's born again. Because he, he, he explained it. He said you must be born of two things. The water and the spirit. The water there represents the ministry of the word. The cleansing power of the word. An encounter with the Holy Ghost. Being born again is not just cheap talk where you just come and stand. I believe in you. You are pinching yourself and laughing. It may be a starting point. But I'm telling you, being born again is much more than Jesus becoming one of those important deities. There is a herbalist at home. There is Jesus. There is the charm. It's just that he's the most important of all of them. You are not born again. Please, I'm saying this. Whether you are listening here and you are, or you are following online, if you have any other charm, any other talisman, any other material, point of reference, point of, of activating the realm of the spirit outside of Christ and everything that is consistent with his character, you are not born again very simple are we together dear you can't tell me you are born again and then under certain conditions you can receive something you know and many of us listen many of us young people you may be laughing at me but there's something they gave you from home they say look life this life is more than what you are seeing that is true you need help that is true but the, where the problem starts is what you are giving they pray for you and give you a Bible. And then they squeeze one charm that looks like an arrow. They tell you to put it under your box. You are not born again. No, sir. See, let me tell you, anything that the Lord Jesus cannot bring in your life, don't let anybody fool you that it will happen. It may look like it's happening. But you see, because Jesus said, I am the door. Do you know what that means? I am the legal access point to everything in the kingdom. He never said I am the only one. He said I am the door. Any other person can enter the house through windows. But there is always a side effect. You will not see it yet until the charm starts working. So the charm will give you money and take your fertility. Are you getting the point now? That's not the discussion with the herbalist. He himself does not know the side effect because he is practicing. So you collect the charm. You start building the house. 
but then you find out that you cannot give birth again or you give birth to 12 children and none of them become useful any other door listen there are many like this place now if we see you smuggling yourself through this window we know you are an armed robber you are a thief are we together there is a legitimate entrance don't tell me you are entering which way are you following jesus said i am the door i am the door don't tell me you are getting rich don't tell me you are getting blessed don't tell me you are increasing it matters to me whether you are following the door then i will know whether your success will have side effect on me let me tell you don't come close to anybody until you study the systems around his life and how he is doing what he is doing how she is doing what she is doing are we together now an encounter with jesus when you encounter jesus you will not only love him you will follow him you will not only love him you will serve him you will not only love him you will live for him you will not only love him you will influence others into that encounter with him has nothing to do with ministry has nothing to do with being a man of god it is the effect of an encounter when saul of tarsus in the book of acts had an encounter with the lord jesus christ it changed his life forever remember what's the name of that short man in the bible Zacchaeus when Zacchaeus had an encounter with Jesus what happened he changed his life forever Zacchaeus just come down I'm going to your house at once Zacchaeus changed when he met the centurion he changed there were other people I believe that Jesus met that were not recorded in the Bible because you see the way they had a soft spot towards him. One of them was Joseph of Arimathea. I believe he was a great man and because he was Caesar's friend, you can liken it to being in the same political party. So he would not be outspoken about Jesus, but secretly, secretly he loved him. Have you had an encounter with Jesus? enough to fuel your life for a lifetime if the lifespan do you know it's a terrible thing when people love God on campus or love God before marriage I have seen many people who used to love God on campus you see them today they are hardly born again some were campus fellowship presidents some held crusades have you seen some of our parents you see them drinking beer and you say daddy do something about it say look i held crusade in benin i held crusade in abuja i did three days dry you see them giving you what is supposed to be a good accolade and they say i've tried everything so don't even bring this issue of man of god you are just starting before you were born we served God. Have you heard of Ebenezer Obey? I was in his band. Have you heard of uh, so, 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 and so? I, I sang there. They carry the pain of their frustration and make it look as though it's serving God that brought that to them. It's a terrible thing for someone to say, I once was with God and now I've left him. No, sir. He said, Ye who have continued with me, not those who started ye who have continued with me lift your voice in one minute and say lord i'm with you forever i'm with you forever i'm with you forever mm. lift your voice and pray i need you to secure your place because some of us are already one leg in one leg out the pain of recession is about sweeping you ah jesus jesus how i trust you how I prove the your Lord Jesus, Jesus Precious Jesus Oh for grace to, to trust Lift your voice and say Lord what shall separate me from your love Not famine uh -uh. Not CGPA not recession i am with you and i'm with you forever whether things work well or not whether ministry works well or not is a decision i have made lift your voice and pray any other person can make his decision any other person can say anything lord 
I know that I may be angry if I don't succeed but leaving you is not part of the equation it's a sword covenant it's a fraternity with you in life and in death I pledge allegiance to the land with all my strength with all I am I will seek to honor his command I pledge allegiance sing it like a kingdom anthem from your heart I pledge of an encounter you will raise your children after your encounter don't tell me you are a Christian father are you hearing what I'm saying and you give birth to a child and then you don't care what the child is watching you don't care whether the child is going to church are we together many little children that's why I love our little ones in Koinonia you may think they are not understanding what you are teaching but it's entering their spirit we live in a society where parents they, they just their assignment is just to give birth to children they give them education they give them every other thing but jesus are we together yeah you're going to church you leave the baby with a house help are we together you come back from church and you sit down other adults are watching certain things that may not be good for the child you don't care let me tell you if you have an, an encounter with Jesus everything you do whoever is under your roof will do it oh come on you stay under my roof as I'm blasting tongues I want to hear your own in your room in your room you are responding you, you don't stay under my roof I'm paying for your life and you are living your life then it means you are an adult enough if you stay under my roof you will serve Jesus I assure you please take what I'm saying seriously our society is depraved today because many parents went to church but they did not have encounter so they only gave us what was valuable to them which was education as good as it is they didn't give us Jesus some of us were on our way to destruction but God intercepted Ah, hallelujah you've heard me say it again and again when a lady brings a gentle man a lady brings a gentle man to her parents they don't ask whether he's born again and serious with God let me tell you in one minute I can know whether you are born again or not even if you wear suit ha, ha. this is a culture this is a culture are we together so we give our daughters to foolish men who are anti-kingdom we give our sons to wicked women who are anti-christ and we this this combination produces nonsense that's what is destroying our, our generation now what we are reaping is the carelessness of 30 years the carelessness of 40 years and if we do not correct it let me tell you the key is not insulting the government there must be a generation that is addicted and no nonsense about God imagine a man getting married with his wife two of them pray in tongues no problem two of them love God no problem as you give birth to your child before wicked men hold him you hold him as the father Shakata bakataya. you are prophesying 
What are you doing? I'm prophesying. Oh, stop that thing. Are you joking? That's how I married in the first place. Leba kato barataya. I call you blessed. You came out from my loins. I prophesy. You will. Everything is born after its kind. I will not love God and give birth to an arm robber. So you prophesy. If I'm your father, you should look like it. I'm showing you what lack of an encounter has produced in our society. To an extent, to an extent that if you are godly, they look at you as if something is wrong with your life. You have to explain godliness, something that should be institutionalized. Go outside of Zaria and see a young lady. If a young lady likes a guy, do you know how she attracts him? She starts singing bad and nonsense song, thinking that's what he likes. Are you getting the point now? So you sing all of the songs thinking that by singing that the guy will be attracted. Brother, shout no way. Yeah. Abba. Abba. After reading Proverbs 31. Uh -uh. Ladies, you two shout no way. Yeah. Don't bring shell and NMPC and deceive anybody. Do you have an encounter with Jesus? Listen. Don't just say I have an encounter with God. God means anything. Do you have an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God? Let me prove to you that a man has an encounter with Jesus. You are unashamed about submitting to his values. If you have met Jesus, then you must be ready to submit to his values. Don't come and meet me with your philosophy, your ideology. You have not met Jesus. Listen. If you are here in Koinonia, if you are truly under this grace, you should have submitted to our way of doing things. So when you see somebody who is under this grace, you know at once the way you talk, the things you do, your passion for God. You can easily know someone who just came to Koinonia for the first time. Sometimes people come to share testimonies here and once in a while they can be a bit unruly or a bit vulgar and I see the reaction in people. It's like, no, 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 this is anti koinonia culture. I can see it in you. So why will you go out with somebody who just told you he's born again? Born again is like an ID card. You can see it is visible. Kai, this, 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 thing, this thing is, I'm speaking from my spirit. Some relationships should be cancelled. Yeah, we cancel it in Jesus' name. I'm not asking you. You will see what will happen from the prophecy. Because some of you are insisting. I counsel it in the name of Jesus Christ. Destroy your life in the name of love. Love is not stupidity. Are we together? If you have had an encounter with Jesus. You must have the value system of the kingdom. Somebody comes to your house. Everything he's saying is nonsense. Every wrong word. Do you know there are words you don't even have to be born again? Societally speaking, when you are getting to certain political positions, they culture you. When you when you are going to see the Queen of England, or they culture you. You learn how to speak. There are indices that show you have encountered God. Number one, it's your words. Not just dressing, your words. You speak nonsense. You say anything, anytime. You have a come on. Please, please. All kinds of selection in your phone. There is the one for when you are high, you, you just take it high. Then whenever you feel guilty, when you listen to messages on rapture, the coming of Christ, you just switch. Truly, you have not encountered Jesus. Don't laugh as I'm telling you this because it's a serious thing. You are not going to bribe God into fulfilling destiny. It has to be his way. Everybody say an encounter with Jesus. Now lift your voice and pray and say Lord anything trying to prove in my life that I've not had an encounter drive it drive it far drive it far drive it far some of you need to make some calls to certain people call that gentleman and tell him I love you but apostle just preached a message I can't marry you it can't work again sorry about the time I've wasted it can't work again it's as simple as that some of us who are about to get married, some of us who have children, it's time to get back, bring the cross to your house, bring Christian values to your house. Don't live a life that is vulgar. Don't raise children that are wayward, indisciplined. No, sir. No, sir. 
Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. You see, these are the things that should be discussed in church. I'm telling you this. Are we together? Yeah. How many elders are not born again? We just array the names of people. When did this one join our church? 1991. When did this one join our church? 98. If we give this person and don't give this, he'll be angry. Well, let's give him something. Are you seeing that? And then you now pick somebody just because he's old. He's the elder in charge of marriage counseling. You have never supervised what he's teaching the young people. And they come around and he's teaching nonsense. Do you think all this idea of beating wife, do you think people just invented it? Someone advised somebody and say, I did it, it worked. Do it, it works. Let's return Jesus to our lives, oh. Let's return Jesus to our lives. You know what I'm saying is not a lie. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. So please, if you are here today, at the end of the service, I'll make an altar call. Please, I want you to examine your concept of born again. If you have not submitted to the values of the kingdom, you need Jesus. Please, let's not argue this thing this night. You need Jesus. I don't care whether you are praying in tongues. No, sir. Are we together? Then your life, then your home. If my shirt has palm oil you spill palm oil and you come with a white shirt and hug me and I hold you there if you leave won't you see some stain something about, show me what implicates you and shows us you have met Jesus don't just say you met Jesus the Bible says in the book of Acts in the Jerusalem council when they saw Peter they saw these guys they knew they were timid but they knew they had been with Jesus they saw them when they were timid but now they had seen them men of conviction. Let's sit down and continue. An encounter with Jesus, number one. Number two, now that we have cleared the way, I want us to sit down and talk now because this second point that I want to bring is really where the anointing is this night. So what you have even received now is an appetizer. Here comes the main course. May you eat it, every part of it, in Jesus name the second key the second key to fulfilling your destiny the second key to fulfilling your God given destiny is the power of preparation and thoroughness write it down the power of preparation and thoroughness preparation thoroughness preparation thoroughness the power of preparation the power of thoroughness second chronicles 27 please verse 6 second chronicles 27 verse 6 second chronicles 27 I like us to read it is projected one to read so dotham became uh-huh because he prepared his ways before the lord what was the secret of his exploits what was the secret of his might he prepared his way and he did that in the presence of god under his supervision preparation there is power in preparation write it down there is power in preparation we live in a time and a generation especially for we young people there is such an obsession for manifestation such an obsession for manifestation oh let me prove I'm a millionaire by age 20 let me prove I'm this and that let me prove there's nothing wrong with those things but preparation 
preparation. There is such an appetite of bringing our future into our today to prove a point. And we destroy ourselves because we lack that ingredient of preparation. What do you do during preparation? Number one. What do you do during preparation? Number one. You learn and understand the principles of the kingdom. I call them the mysteries of the kingdom. That's what you do during times of preparation. Your times of preparation are largely times of learning and understanding the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. God has called me into an extraordinary ministry. God has told me I have an apostolic or a prophetic ministry. God has told me I'm going to the nations. Every time in my dream, I see myself changing people. Thank you, man of God. But what are you doing about it? Oh, I'm already buying suits. God has even shown me who my wife will be. That's not preparation. You are, that's carelessness. I assure you, you will not arrive that way. Preparation. This great ministry that God is giving me, what will it take? What do I know? Do I understand administration? Do I understand finances? This great ministry will be fueled by the word and by the anointing. Have I understood the mysteries? Listen, I want you to put your life on a project. Find out all the tools you will be using in the place of destiny and begin to source for them. Find out. There are many tools we need. You need the anointing in the place of destiny have you discovered how to bring it and keep it in your life and multiply it in your life number two you need access to revelation the working knowledge of the word of god what keys do you have in your hand show me the keys you are accessing and i'll see whether you will get to your tomorrow finances our destinies are capital intensive so they require a lot of finances show me what mentorship show me what book you are reading oh apostle i'm doing business you will fail that's not the key the key is to receive knowledge the key is to change your mindset not to offer products and services yet that's the last step of the equation we love manifestation we love manifestation i receive text messages all the time and most of what people we, we, we like programs we like events conferences conventions someone sent me a text that he had a vision that we're holding six conventions in koinonia every year i said shift that vision to the future it's certainly not happening now no convention for what what is the meaning of the word convention what is the meaning of the word conference we abuse these things because we do rituals without revelation are we together now now is the time for building please hear me now is not the time for buying suits now is the time for buying books now is the time for buying the experiences of people now is the time for buying the pain of people buy their experiences preparation I see many people who say they want to be men of God. I don't criticize them, but I'm just laughing. Because most people think all there is to ministry is to have the ability to throw somebody down. You are joking. If it was that easy, I guarantee you people would not be suffering. Benihin came around Nigeria. And you see the number of desperate people. We all flocked in waiting to receive an anointing. What does that tell you? It's scarce. Genuine power is scarce. Make no mistakes about it. Do you know why many people do not rise? We are comfortable with average. Average will only bring you in the scene but never distinguish you. Reward is for those who are distinguished, not those who are present. <laughs> is God speaking to someone? There is power in preparation. Let me tell you, when I started out in ministry, I didn't do many of the things many people are doing in life. No. No. That time, ask K. Jimmy, I used to walk with a bag. Remember my black bag? It had Bible. It had my books. The books, the speakings of God to my life. I would always walk with it. Those were the times you see people who buy tape. Oh, yeah, they go tape. 
maybe Pastor Chris, any other tape, and they are small rechargeable. They would raise all their money and buy rechargeable. Not, not. Many of us seated here, you do not have any device for hearing the word of God. You don't. But you have clothes. You are a young lady of 19, 20. You have clothes of a married woman of 35. It's not wise. It's, it's a terrible, it's an extended version of foolishness. Are we together? You, you must take your destiny serious. This thing does not happen by magic. God is not a charm. He's not a genie. You've got to be serious. Some of us, as you keep your Bible like this, it's Friday that you pick it again. And yet you move around. I am, I, I, I hope to be called. Let's see which one, uh, prophet, apostle. I will use pastor. You are dreaming. <laughs> are we together? One gentleman sent me a text during miracle service that he was coming. I said, who are you? He says, a man of God somewhere. I said, that's all right, you are welcome. Then he sent me a text. He says, inform me so that they'll put a special reservation for him in front. I said, my brother, this front seat you see is a testimony. The front seat is not a wish. It's a testimony. This is a testimony. You, you come and sit down. The seat will reject you. Have you seen that kind of thing? Where people, kings, come and sit down. They say somebody dies. You don't sit down in a seat unprepared, sir. No. Preparation. I look at your prayer life and I know whether you are preparing. You want to be able to stand and preach. That's what kills a lot of men of God. They have not built that spiritual capacity. Don't you know that praying in tongues is like doing business? You are making an investment of strength into your future. A time will come you will not have the time to do 10 hours every day again. I can't pray for 10 hours every day. I'll be an irresponsible man of God because there are things to do. But there were times I would stay morning till night. I was building strength. He said, eat for the journey is far. Brothers and sisters, some of you, now is the time to lock yourself. You may look stupid, but you are building an extraordinary ministry. You're already in prayer band two weeks. You say they don't know me. Please sit down, Jare, and, and walk on your destiny. All this quest for recognition. Recognition. I think they should know me. No, sit down. Sit down. There is power in preparation. Let your competence announce you. Let the grace upon your life announce you. You cannot light a lamp and put it under a bushel. But you also cannot put a lamp that is not lit on top. All this quest for manifestation, please hear the voice of the Lord tonight. That's not the way to do it. That's not the way to do it. Someone asked me a question, I think, I don't know if it was a year or two ago, and said, Apostle, what are you doing with your life now? I told him, I said, I am preparing for an extraordinary life. He said, preparing? I said, exactly. Uh, you think this thing I'm doing is ministry? This is industrial attachment. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. This is not close to what I've seen in the visions of the Lord. It doesn't even look like it. Compared to the koinonia God showed me, this is a, a cave. We are just waking up. Are you that inspired? Or have you started clapping for yourself and you want to build a camp around it? Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life. We don't I look to you for life. Let me come to your house and your room. Show me your library. And I see how serious you are with knowledge. Books are very important. They are a communication of your value for knowledge. When you buy a book, you are not buying paper, you are buying a man's pain. You are you are you are you are buying access to a man's testimony people's mistakes at a platter of gold for you to study and understand there are many people who don't read let me tell you how you know you are not preparing for your destiny 
is excessive idleness when i see a young man who is idle you must be lazy or you are not preparing do you know the urgency number one for most of us over 95 percent of us a mistake has already been made in our foundation i hope you know some of us got born again at 26 27 you are already behind at age 14 mary was giving birth to jesus you are 25 you are not born again you are already behind schedule why should you be roaming up and down in broad daylight you move around and you see people just taking sugar cane gisting and then they come to someone else's house how are you i was just strolling are you free and then they are offended when you say you are not free Everybody say, I'm going somewhere. Say it, I'm going somewhere. And now is the season of preparation. I will prepare. You want to be a millionaire? Let me see the preparation. Let me see the preparation. Show me the character traits you are building that will qualify God to grant you access to such wealth. You want to be an extraordinary leader? Show me those you are receiving mentorship from. You are moving around not doing anything ladies hear me don't be under pressure the next thing in your life after school is not just marriage thank god for marriage but build yourself focus on preparation than manifestation you are not qualified to receive anything you are not prepared for preparation preparation settle down prepare kata, kata, baladaba. lord you said you are going to give me the nations work on my character let me become an exceptional man of god lord at this small level of ministry they are already criticizing me i can imagine the criticisms on great men like papa oyedeko and adeboye lord build me you have already told me that my ministry will have branches all over the nations of the earth can i survive the criticism that takes that, that having that kind of anointing will bring. Don't you know it's, it's, it's risky to be rich? Do you know the criticisms? Somebody will look at you and say, young people like this, they, they, they thought something. You are right. You are right. Nobody becomes rich just by doing nothing. They've criticized you small. Somebody just looked and said, I don't like Pastor Femi's shirt. And he's, he's angry. He's quarreling. He said, no, no, what is wrong with my shirt? Ah, and then you now want to be a leader over two million people. You want to die? Ask Moses. Moses, the meekest man on earth. He was angry and about to kill himself. God said, calm down. That's how ministry is. Have you ever gone to God for prayer? And God said, no, that's how it is. So I hope you know that. That there is no breakthrough for this prayer is how it works hallelujah i have a very interesting friend who wanted to organize crusade one time the guy was passionate about souls he was not passionate about finances so he wanted to organize crusade I, after the prayer fasting visions everything he didn't even start because there was nothing to start with he couldn't even start i told him i said well these are the logistics that are part of ministry and he was so disappointed and angry because in his mind i was the sponsor of that crusade i said no way god did not give me any vision i am not the ram and the scapegoat you heard from god Flog out your way of funding that vision. Brothers and sisters, preparation is powerful. When you go through, you read books and you see how a man of God will tell you 12 years in his life, nothing worked. And then you say that I'm four years. That means there's hope for me. That means it's not unusual. It's not like I don't have faith. Let's continue going. You study about a man who built his conglomerate. He will tell you he built 20 companies and they failed. He was the 21st one that is the one that is blessing you. And you say, I just built three and they failed. Ah, there's hope for me. You are learning. Preparation is giving you strength. A time will come, they look at you. And they say, you claim to be a man of God's wife. Look at your husband. His mouth is looking dry. You are not feeding him. And you say, ah, but husband, am I not feeding you? You didn't prepare. 
because if you prepared you would have studied other men of God's wife and they would have told you this thing is normal so as they are insulting you you just say oh so that's how it is your spirit has been prepared anything you cannot take now is because you are not preparing you will see a man of God lying down and think the place is cold you lie down there and the heat will burn you because your skin you know what they used to do for masquerade they say they used to cook them so that nothing will happen allow preparation cooking so that while somebody is shouting now and saying do you know apostle is a herbalist do you i know the woman that gave him power and then you come and tell me as a as a concern i say apostle i respect you they are spoiling your name and then i laugh <laughs> i would have cried in 2006 or 7 but now oh come on prophesy to yourself say myself grow up say it myself grow up there are many needless struggles we are going through because we are not prepared you are not the first to be criticized are we together you are not the first to go through challenges you are not the first to go through disappointment it's only because you have not studied others who had worse cases so you don't have a basis for comfort god is speaking to someone tonight preparation some of us are confused where we are now you don't know whether to start a church you don't know whether to start a prayer group you are not the first to start ministry go and examine the top 20 ministries how did they start there was a day it was in their mind did they start a church service bishop oyedepo did not want to start a church because at that time there were already too many churches based on him so your confusion about should i start a branch fellowship is because of your level and your thinking you are not the first to think like that when you learn that you will appreciate mentorship because you bring your mountain and somebody just walks on it and says, ah, I see this mountain, I remember 1981. Go and read the book. There is, there is a solution for that mountain. Oh man of God, our ministry is about to be thrown out now. We are owing 30 million. I said, just 30 million, I'm compl complaining. In 91, we're owing 500 million. And then you now sit down. You are hearing a man talking to you and he says, look, let me tell you what to do. Pray, give a seed, and go to bed nothing is as bad as it is and then you conquer that i remember when one time um we held a little program and i was going thirty thousand. Thirty thousand. i was sweating i didn't know what to do with my life thirty thousand. it was from one book money somebody loaned us it was so terrible i remember the day it was even late dr bimbo dukoya's books when they brought her to zaria 2005 after organizing the program now very nicely his presence in worship are we together now there was no i mean the whole thing and they needed the money by nine o'clock nine o'clock by seven o'clock i don't i'm not sure i had on to 500 i was sweating around i didn't know what to do so now you are owing eight thousand and you are moving around my blood i, I think i'm having high blood pressure calm down calm down there is something preparation will teach you that you stand up and walk god is speaking to someone it is comforting to see those who have gone through what you are going through times 10 find out what they did to come out preparation and dotan became mighty unmovable let me tell you i have studied the life of men in ways you cannot imagine studying their life built great comfort in me many of them were 10 times as ignorant as i am now yet they were able to go through some things and i said no at this level i even know more there's no reason why i should fidget it will work to work you are not the first to get married you are planning for marriage and you just say ah, my budget is 1.5 eh? dr jenny 1.5 you are seeing a man with two children you will not ask questions sir two children means you married what happened what did you do you know see it's pride to think your problem is new to everybody it's pride what is a mountain to you is a valley to someone you are not the first to have carryover hey will i stay or will they drive me please go to bed there are people who have taught this lad you are seeing left right and center to a point that they just look at the board and say glory be to god Fear is as a result of ignorance. 
and it's partly a product of not preparing you have ignored the pain and the sacrifice of others somebody's pain you have ignored is why you are afraid today because if you buy their materials and study their lives you will learn their pain koinonia was not built in a day many of you have never cared to ask the story behind it because you don't care all you know is that you are enjoying there will be workers dinner and it's free paid for just dress well and come and say, i like koinonia i like a ministry that takes care of us like this there was a story there was a story behind it preparation you learn the principles of the kingdom preparation that's the time of trial and error please hear me that's the time when you are you are learning to handle the keys of the kingdom like a baby trying to hold a key and open a door you will use wrong keys you will use wrong keys it's in the place of preparation you will know how the anointing works so God will keep building you you will read the books you will listen to the messages then one day you and God will go on small IT somebody will now say please Pastor Femi can you just pray for our little group and he say ah me I mean you are even calling me pastor and then on that day you will pray some things will happen others will not happen you will first go with confidence you have fasted dry it's even dry you went for the meeting and then you go there before you start preaching somebody is already shouting and you are like eh that means this is easy then every other person you lay hands on now doesn't fall and I say what's the confusion I didn't lay hands on anybody somebody was shouting the ones I now in direct contact with the anointing so preparation you now go back in one message you are hearing you will hear a mystery that explains that operation say, ah this is what I did wrong you have learned you are learning you are learning are we together you are learning about finances God told you you'll be a multi-millionaire CEO all that you've held home and abroad in your entire life is hundred thousand and you are working one day God will give you IT somebody will just send you four hundred thousand and say please can you keep it for me for two weeks and you find out your body is shaking you can't sleep you will get up you are moving up and down you say ah, should I touch this money and pay back quickly you see a revelation that you are not qualified you are beginning to see the effect of money then you learn from that preparation that money is a spirit it's not just notes it can do something to you and you are now thinking 200,000 is in my account and I cannot sleep what will happen if 200 million is in my account then you begin to respect every man who you see sitting down he's a millionaire but he's drinking a bottle of water it took discipline to conquer that what are you what are you ignoring by refusing preparation is God speaking to someone you are preparing you want to be a good wife in the process of preparation you will read a book and see that a man of God's wife she will now say God told me when God told me my husband did not yet know and God was sending me to women to go and cook with them and you say ah the Holy Spirit will tell you now go and do likewise you will now say ah Auntie Shade please can I come to your house just to help you and while you are washing place you are asking her questions and she's answering what happens when a great man is angry as a good wife how do you treat if your husband is a public figure how do you shield him you are not learning you are only saying this brother God has been speaking you are not seeing me you will never see you because God is not a wicked God to carry his servant laboring and just give you no you prepare you prepare say amen stop claiming things carelessly sit down and prepare and before you know it you will see them in your hands I respect people who are mighty yet understand the power of preparation there are people you see in this koinonia mighty men and women in the spirit very mighty you just see them quiet some of them have had one-on-one -on -one encounter with them their prayer life fire their word life fire the maturity and wisdom upon their life is uncommon nobody even knows them they are quiet God is preparing them one day you just see God will carry one brother and give them and say, ah, where is this one coming from? Are you joking? Nobody comes from nowhere. People are preparing quietly. You are the only one standing where pe prepared people are standing, but you are not prepared. 
I receive grace to prepare. Lift your voice and pray. I receive grace. Lord, I see how I've been shortchanging myself. I've been acting like I've arrived. I've been trying to look rich. I've been trying to look anointed. By this teaching tonight, oh God, I receive grace. Grace, koinonia, pray. I stop complaining about what is not working. I value the pain of those who have gone ahead of me and I make up my mind to draw from them hallelujah praise the Lord a pastor sent me a text and the pastor was really complaining he said man of God God is increasing us in ministry but right now I just discovered every other thing in my life has died my prayer life has died my word life has died I still see miracles I still see great things but I'm so disorganized I used to be an organized person and I told him I said you are still using the mindset you, you were using when you were starting ministry are we together do you know what it means for a very busy person to still maintain his prayer life there is a technique it's not just as the spirit leads there is a system how do you maintain a prayer life reading chapters of the bible when from morning till night you are walking how do you balance that as an influential person you are married with two three children how do you maintain your spiritual life how do you maintain a good fatherhood and a, you're a good husband you are not the first to go through it find out there are people who are flawlessly effective find out there are men of God who preach five, six messages every week and everything is new. You want, you are already tired. Your little fellowship in one state somewhere, maybe just two or three branches and it's already killing you. Yet people like Dr. Paul Enenche running six services every Sunday, two services every week, intermittently they can travel to Europe and come back in the morning, find out there is a system. There is a system, otherwise it will kill you. John G. Lake did not understand that. He did well in ministry and died in his family life. What is the secret of men of God who are effective in family? Their schedules are packed full, everything. I remember when we started, I didn't know that there was a protocol department that handled ministrations and made things easy. I used to handle them by myself. You bring your letter, you come and give me. I look at it. I say, okay, let me go and pray about it. At a point, there were several letters. I said yes to many people. I'll say, yes, I'm coming to your church. Yes, I'm coming to your fellowship. I will not even remember. I found out that I had to prepare four, five messages in a week. It was weighing me down. I said, it's not like I don't have what to say, but I can't stand before God's people and preach what I know God is not leading me to say. I can preach any nice sermon, but will it be effective? Are we together? What do you not know? I'm drawing you to a point. Your pain today is because you have ignored preparation somewhere. Then I began to study. I got Bishop Oedeko's book, Towards Excellence in Life and Ministry. I got that Hayward that, that Mills book, Church Administration and Management. I got some of the Adela's books, Pastoring Without Tears. I got some of these materials and sat down. When I began to study, I said, ah, so this is how it works. I've been killing myself for no reason. Are we together? Killing myself for no reason. I remember when I had to be under pressure to answer everybody's call. It was like I'm a receptionist. Somebody will call and say, is this apostle? I just want to know. And for five minutes, you are arguing with the person. Is this apostle? If it's not apostle, please don't waste my time. And it's my credit, oh. I'm now calling. I say, it's apostle. Say, oh, apostle, please, do you have time? Because what I'm about to tell you is, is boiling in my spirit. And I will now carry my big head and say, yes, I have time. And for 30 minutes, while you are talking, another text is entering, another call. And I find out that sometimes you can stay three hours. You are just answering call. And you are fagged out. You are fatigued. Someone will finish his work. He will work well, have a nice time with his wife, go to church and come back, then call you. That's when you now want to rest. Then others started calling by one or two because they found out that I don't sleep in the night. They will now call and say, Apostle, sorry, you. They just go ahead. I used to feel so guilty. If I'm sleeping and my phone is ringing, I feel so bad until I read a man of God's book 
that delivered me. Now it can ring. If it's an emergency, call the police. Yeah. All the police. People would threaten me and say, man of God, pride, pride. You've not gotten anywhere. You used to respond to us before. You even used to send us recharge card. But now you are, you are getting arrogant. I will feel so bad. I will say, but God, please search my heart. Until I found out that that's how people are. It's not like they are just becoming it for me. They are like that everywhere. I just said, ah, please, go to bed. Ah, somebody's already gaining wisdom. They are gaining wisdom. So when you walk out of here and you see what she's wearing. You say, why does everybody hate me? No, you are not the only one. It's like that. You are just discovering it. You are just discovering it. I don't know why everybody talks about me. Everybody, is there something wrong? Ah, if, if you are looking at your legs, you will cut two of your legs. Because there are too many people who can talk. Ah, God is giving us wisdom. Preparation. 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 There are some of us married people. People come to your house. You are under pressure to cook for them and give them everything. Because let, let them not say we are not good. Let them say who. Oh. Let them say. Because you will find lousy people. They'll come to your house. Is there pepper soup in this house? You will think they are joking. They really mean it. You will rush, go to the market, buy, buy cow. You think it's just a joke. You are not learning to grow up. You need to listen to people who have learned to manage people like that. Two o'clock, they'll come again. They'll say, sorry, yo, we are here again. Is there still something for us? Then you will read a book that one determined young man one day walked up to them and said, please, visitor, we have, we have a program in this house. There are times we have Bible study. There are times I'm just spending time with my wife. There are times we are spending time with the children. It is important to let us know you are coming. Man say, what is there? What do you think you are? Leave him. Let him go. Carry his trouble and go. At least you are free now. There is something you need to know to set you free. Most of this depression we are having is because there is something you don't know. So you sit down there and think people are talking about you. What will they be saying about me? What won't they say? Do well, they will talk. Don't do well, they will talk. So be used to it and enjoy your life. You see what preparation does for you. So you create a system of joy that is independent of the things around you. And you become a motivated leader. And everybody looks at you and says, wow, this guy is a leader worthy of emulation. Then your ministry increases because you have learned how to motivate people into excellence. Say amen. You have to learn the principles of the kingdom. Very quickly, there are four areas still under the second point. There are four areas that you must work on. Four areas that you must work on. Number one, you must contend for a comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. Generally, as regards understanding the word of God and applying it. Understanding the word of God and applying it, you must contend for that mystery. You must know how to apply scripture to your life. If you want to be great, use your times of preparation to learn how to make the word of God work. Number two, you must contend for the secret to the anointing. In your place of preparation, you must find out. You cannot, um, it has nothing to do with ministry. You want to be great in life without knowing how the anointing comes, you are joking. So in your place of preparation, you have to find out. This anointing that has been responsible for the greatness of many, how does it come? Number three. You must find out principles of leadership and administration. I know you are a man of God. But you are going to have leaders. I know you are a businessman. But it will not always be popcorn forever. A day will come you have companies with offices. You must understand principles of leadership and administration. Number three, you must understand finances. You must, in your place of preparation, you must study finances. No matter how much of a man of God you are, a businessman, a father, you must, this is a tool. I'm mentioning for you the tools that you will use to fulfill destiny. 
you need it study on finances don't just be a money monger don't just be a hustler don't just be obsessed about money and business understand the system understand how this thing works understand the challenges the vicissitudes that surround it are we together number four the last thing you must understand is people and relationships people and relationships brothers and sisters if you don't understand people and relationships you will die like a chicken they asked bishop oyedeko years ago they said what's the greatest source of challenge and pain in your life he said people they said what's the greatest motivation in your life he said people do you know the reason for many discouragement is people what they have said the reason for your encouragement the same people you must understand people get my message understanding people mastering relationships and then the prophetic implication of association you have to learn that i got a book years ago that changed my life how to win friends and influence people by dale kennedy right it blessed me it opened my eyes to the psychology of human relationships it helped me understand people thoroughly to know how to relate with different kinds of people you need this in your life otherwise you will get a job and after two weeks you are angry with everybody because you will meet sarcastic people even as a man of god you are going to meet people in your church people who are very disloyal to you you need to learn what to do with them you are going to meet people who are very anointed but rebellious you are going to meet people who are very submissive but careless and less as fair all these people you have to work with them you get a job you are going to work with lazy people you are going to work with very corny people people who are corny they will bribe and kill you if need be for promotion you've got to understand the ethics of working with people maintaining relationships number three the last point action the last key to opening up your prophetic destiny is action the power of action so number one is an encounter with Jesus number two is the power of preparation number three is action the power of sustained action now by action I don't just mean movement action means the relevant steps that you take action takes courage write it down when you are about to take action over your life your business your ministry it takes courage to act brothers and sisters there are things you are going to be doing in your life you will be the first person to do it in your entire family it takes action it takes courage joshua chapter one he said be strong and of good courage nobody has ever gone to school in your family you are the first to do it there is fear i was i was talking with, i can't remember who i was talking with now we're discussing the subject of fear and i told him there are two dimensions of fear there is fear as a result of the presence of the spirit of fear there is fear as a result of stepping into the unknown you must distinguish them are we together now there is the fear as it is as the presence of a demon spirit you cast that one out god has not given us that spirit of fear but every time you are doing something new or something extraordinary that that ability to push through something that is new will bring fear it's not unusual there are many of us here who have gone through certain sustained seasons of preparation but action action are we together you are the first person in your house to get a job and for many months you have not submitted an application because you are used to everything being done free for you are we together you've not submitted any application and the lord is telling you stand up and go to benin and submit your application say ah god no 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 no. who is going to pay my money where am i going to stay you have to summon courage to get up and take bold steps in life are we together courage courage action requires persistence there are certain times your first step will be the wrong one but it doesn't mean you are wrong the step may be wrong but you are not wrong start the business start the church start the ministry 
action requires courage action requires persistence there is an ugly ideology in the church that the moment people start things and fail people rally around them are you sure it's God and they destroy people's destinies how many great businesses would have stood but for the advices from churches how many great destinies there are people who who left who left certain precious jobs that God gave them simply because of an advice if they are shouting at you like that is he worth it and then you leave it and now you are suffering are we together number three action requires a system now this is very important you don't just act carelessly you act based on a system you build a system you build a system around your action for instance when it's now time for you God has called you and God has anointed you and told you it's time you now sit down there, there is a system you can start a prayer group a prayer fellowship as God is bringing people they are getting healed they are getting blessed God is lifting you God is bringing people into your life most of the people God is bringing are not your members stop calling them your members and sons and daughters they are your leaders in the making are we together God never sends members he sends leaders they will come as drunkards they will come as troublemakers your assignment is to prove your apostleship make them become what you have seen in the vision they will not come ready-made action you must build a system around it we had a system like that when he and i was starting we'll get people born again there was a system you got filled with the holy spirit and then we were praying and so when people got born again in one week they were already on fire a system around your business you may now say okay let me now build a system i separate business money from my personal finances maybe i open an account for business i need to be serious now not that any money that comes is for the eating you don't know which one is for your shop which one is for you so you eat everything and then you calculate and say somebody is stealing somewhere no no so i remember hundred thousand enter why is there sixty thousand you ate it it's your account system all the great empires in the world all the great destinies that you see the uncommon lives in ministry in politics in influence in any area of life were built this way this is the way people become great they have an encounter with jesus that encounter brings them to a submission to his values and the next thing they they plant themselves under a ministry or a platform or a spiritual family are, are you getting the progression now this so that when you get people born again you know what to do with them when people have an encounter with jesus the next assignment is to create a structure or plant them under the bible says they that be planted in the house of god they shall flourish in the courts of our god he said in old age they shall be fat and flourishing hallelujah just like you are seated now now you are hearing this you are taking steps based on what i'm teaching you will go back now and because there is an anointing upon what i'm saying you will not ignore it as you go back it will burn like fire in your spirit you will begin to make decisions that are consistent with it are we together now and you begin to see your life rise you begin to see yourself improve then you can know that I'm going to be a good man not just because I think I'm good I have studied the system that makes men good then I know I'm going to be a blessed man not just because I hate poverty I've studied the system I know I'm going to be extraordinarily anointed not just because I'm, I want to gyrate myself no, 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 no I've understood the system at that point you can look at life and smile it's called mastery you can rise to a point where you look at life and smile and know that I have a great destiny I have a great destiny and you look at your life after 20 30 years and it's nothing short of a life of glorious impact on eagle's wings a book written by bishop david Oedipo, i think to celebrate the 30 years anniversary of living faith then or so i looked at everything the progression on how he started and i said this is it consistent i have studied many great men of god that's how they started Benny Hinn, Dr. Mike Mudok, 
Miles Munro, all the great men that represent great mentors and fathers in my life. I look at their lives and I see consistently, consistently. There were times in their lives they were for many years. It's like things did not happen. Even living faith with the kind of speed that it is experiencing now, there was a time it was stagnated. So you find out because at this point your ministry is not moving. So you go back. What did they do? Oh, they fasted, they prayed, they met together as leaders. They readjusted certain things. Fine. Papa Ie Adeboe, there was a time redeemed, was doing well, but it was taunted. And God told him that redeemed needed to get to all the nations. But as it were, redeemed could not cross certain cultures. It could not go beyond the south. And he went to the Lord. And then the Lord gave him a formula. He gave him a secret. Let him know that when you are dealing with global leadership, you must have respect for people's culture and ideology. It's quite selfish to want people to completely bend to subscribe to your culture. Kingdom culture, yes. But your, your sociological culture and paradigm, it may not be possible with every place. And so he opened up and painfully created that flexibility. So you can see one redeemed branch that looks like a contemporary um, uh, uh, church and all of that and then you see another redeemed branch youthful another redeemed branch still you know holding on to certain values he just focused on the core values that represented the foundation of the ministry to preserve it but then gave the flexibility and now redeemed is everywhere festival of life in uk is as if i mean you see them everywhere there france everywhere redeemed because of that secret you can now look at that why is my church not growing ah and god opens your eyes through that light and you now see it oh the reason why my church is not growing is because um i i i hold on to my values but probably i i impose every value both spiritual cultural sociological on people and that value is restraining people that may be just the key you need to adjust and then all of a sudden you find out that your ministry becomes a habitable place for people. Action. Action. God is challenging some of us to take action. You need to take action over your finances. You need to take action. There are different action steps you can take. You can begin to read books every day. You can listen to messages every day. You can get up and subscribe to direct mentorship. As much as God grants you grace. You may need to settle down and tell yourself, I'm starting that business next month. I'm starting it. I have prepared. I have paid my price. I am starting it. I will start it. Or you can say this month of November is dedicated to scattering my CVs around. I will anoint it. I will pray. I brought it for miracle service. They have prayed for it. Now God is waiting on me. I will scatter it all around. Hallelujah. Action. We are enjoying koinonia today because of the power of action. We are enjoying what God has done today because of the power of action. Listen, when will the generations tied to your grace reap the benefits of the action you are taking or otherwise? Whether or not you move, time is moving. Whether or not you move, time is moving. It is important to move with it. Time is premium. The only way to redeem it is to use it well. You don't save time. You use it well. You redeem it by investing properly in it. Koinonia, I bring you a word today. There is a prophetic destiny for you in Christ. You have been escorting men. Some of you, after tonight, you've got to sit down. Brothers, look at me. After tonight, some of you, when you go back home, don't sleep. You need to carry a chair and sit down outside and just carry a clean sheet of paper and say what am i doing with my life this is not the way it's supposed to work you have been joking around your destiny you are getting old things are not working there is nothing working in your life finances you don't know anything about it fatherhood you don't know anything about it that sense of maturity leadership you've not built anything time is going you have to give yourself a sense of urgency a day will come god will demand accountability for the grace and the life and the power and the strength that he has given you he said i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh it's time for you to begin to study the bible 
it's time for you to begin to study the bible you want to become a great man of god you don't know the bible you're going to crash land you will be tired your members will be weary they will leave your church and go somewhere else simply because you do not have the word you are not instant in season he tapped elijah and said eat for the journey is far i want to round up are you preparing are you preparing for your life sister are you looking for a man or are you preparing for marriage brother do you want to marry by fire by force or are you preparing marriage means a wife marriage means children marriage means the troubles that can come from in-laws have you positioned your spirit to manage it marriage means leadership i want to start a business ceo ceo of what have you studied it I want to become a great man of God. I want to be president and founder or geo. All that one is stories. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Are we together? Listen. I made a decision years ago. Today now makes it, um, not today, but 2016 makes it uh, 14 years 14 years when I made a quality intentional decision now I'd been working with God I'd been doing certain things but when I made up my mind to do what I'm teaching you now 14 years ago so when you see this today it's a product of 14 years of consistency with the Holy Ghost there were many other things that had happened before that time but I made up my mind. I said, from today, I will not be irresponsible. From today. I started studying and making a decision over my finances and my journey 12 years ago. Two years after I started my journey with purpose, I started my journey with finances. Listen, not every time is conducive for everything. You must redeem the time. You hear me saying this thing redeem the time please don't let anybody just come to your house and come and waste your time with gisting and gossiping that does not make sense early in the morning you are supposed to be praying six o'clock there in your house because you stay in the same compound bros how are you day then please please don't, what, what is that shout please i'm happy today's a glorious day take it easy you don't cook you don't do this just speaking tell him please i plan to be a leader take it easy all these your vulgar statements and the rest i appreciate you but take it easy don't come to my house and come and do everything you want to do no you behave action you begin to dress well you begin to be serious about your life are we together now yeah actions that reflect your destiny you stop excessively spending money anyhow these are action steps that some of you need to take make up your mind that from today no fake life i'm not ashamed if all i can take is gary now i'm not going to say others are taking rice uh -uh. by god's grace i will take gary honorably any lady that cannot like me taking gary now does not deserve to eat my rice with me i will continue moving no pressure no pressure god has given me two members i will guard them jealously and teach them with all my heart and love them no competition are we together now i open an account i'm saving i am disciplined can't be a student and you are buying with one of ten thousand fifteen thousand it's not wise you are destroying your future that fifteen thousand can buy you a book 15 plus one secret to a happy home. I think something like that. Uh, uh, Dr. Mrs. Enenche, 500 naira, 1,000. You change your life. Are we together? God blesses you with 10,000 naira. You go and buy materials and dress well. Dress well. You don't look irresponsible. Please, I'm challenging us. We are going to pray. But I need to be sincere with you. You look well. You dress smart. You start learning certain ethics. When you are going before the presence of a great man, you don't look foolish. You destroy yourself. Now you begin to learn that not every opportunity opens every time. There are some of you here, brothers, you don't have one good suit. One good suit. 
you can budget for it one good suit so that the day God opens a door you have something nice you keep wearing all these rags that people wear around looking like fools and then you smile around it no you will never be great that way are we together you come to a point in your life where you begin to act responsibly when you see ladies you respect them you don't talk like a fool speak everything and no 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 no. you act like you are preparing to get married there are some of you I see you you are still acting like children although you are matured you begin to act responsibly you see someone's child falling down you create a sense of responsibility oh let me help this person you are taking action that is opening doors for you you see a man that is anointed you don't just stand let's see what he's saying pastor Alpha, what does he even have to say no the law of honor see there is a way you look at someone you know he has grown up you know he has grown up are we together let's take steps for our destiny you may not like what I'm teaching you tonight but just like others who are saying thank you now you will say thank you tomorrow I guarantee you you may not like me for what I'm teaching you now because for some of you I'm challenging you listen there are some of you especially ladies because you are very beautiful your beauty makes it such that anybody who comes around you likes you so there's nobody to really tell you the truth my name is Joshua Selman I'm telling you you have to settle down and be serious with your life you cannot float around a destiny full of flattery somebody has got to tell you this is wrong this is right the person who challenges you is the person who loves you. God is using me to do for us now what some of us did not get at home. And I will do it well. You may not, if you like, don't hate me, no problem. But you will thank me tomorrow. I love you too much to leave you the way you are. Stop all this childish play. Stop all these, these irresponsible things people do around. Gossiping around, misbehaving. Some of you, are, you have already collected phone on credit. Go and return it. You don't need that kind of lifestyle. Oh, please, hey, Jimmy, uh, can I use your trouser for two weeks? No, you are, you are acting like a child. Can I use your shirt? I like your phone. Can you borrow me? I'm traveling somewhere. All these things are attitudes of children. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child. I spoke like a child. Now that I'm a man, what do I do? I lay aside these childish things. Have you laid aside these childish things? Or are you just growing old? Maturity. Let me come into your room or your house or whatever and see it nice. I look at you and I see how careful you are. I don't come into your house and I see your fridge spoiled, your TV spoiled, your table dirty, your carpet dirty. And I just see you and you say, Ah, apostle, you are welcome. May his presence. No, no, no. You are not showing responsibility. That's the same way you'll be an irresponsible man. The fridge will spoil. You say, My wife will fix it. You are not already assuming responsibility. God cannot give you a great ministry. You can't fix your fridge of 1,000 naira. You want to fix lives? No, sir. Are we together? You wear clothes that are torn and dirty. You don't care? No, sir. You have to behave well. Say in the name of Jesus. From today, I make up my mind. That I will fulfill destiny. Say it again from today. I make up my mind. That I will fulfill destiny. Give me two more minutes. And then we'll pray. How about bad friends? I can't round up without talking about that. Show me your association. And I show you your true values. Show me your association. Whether you went to the same primary school, secondary school, it was your chief, um, 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 your, your best man, whatever. <laughs> Service, love you, God. What does say, chief bride's made? Praise God. All this solidarity to wrong friends, you've got to make up your mind. You see, I've been saying this thing. Do you know some of us, if only you can leave your bad friends, your journey to a good life starts? Especially for us ladies especially for us ladies you love God but the moment you meet them they come with their wrong ideologies and then they force you to have to believe it 
you just came back from church and now you are making up your mind I will be responsible and someone go, hey this day oh ladies can I sit down you know that's what you just repented of but because of the presence of that friend he said Todd just tell me and you now keep listening before you know it you go back to your vomit again may God deliver you this night the courage to let people know you are serious about your destiny see I don't know what is it this our ego thing is what we have refused to take out of the way if I tell this person sorry you are interrupting my destiny they will feel bad they will criticize me so what so what make up your mind are we together make up your mind this night in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ make up your mind and say things will change I pray that you will really change in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that you will really change in the name of Jesus Christ there are many other things we need to change about some of you have up to 20 relationships consciously you don't care to you it's a symbol that you are a fine girl say do you know all these guys are dying I guarantee you none of them will marry you for you to be that careless with your life they will ask you out but when they are ready to marry they will come to church the brother will repent and dress well and come and look for a quiet lady who loves God every man stupid or sensible wants peace in his house are we together yeah so some of us pride ourselves there are good brothers coming they love God they fear God they are coming but you are there busy doing your emotional razzmatazz with all kinds of people you are growing old God will open doors for the brothers the brothers you see today that cannot buy a good shoe they will buy what will open your mouth tomorrow and by that time they will not be ready to marry you they will marry people younger than you don't be angry I'm sorry I'm saying this but I'm challenging you and brothers don't think what I've said now is a license for you to be foolish because some of you deserve no almost forever until you do something with your life please don't don't ever use what I'm saying now as an endorsement to come and harass any lady if you don't merit saying any no um, they will bring you to me you are going to meet me somewhere in the equation uh, we will meet and I will tell you no no you are not you are not responsible enough it's as simple as that she may not have the courage to tell you but I guarantee you I will tell you you know why I'm doing this to you tonight I came with this spirit of fatherhood tonight because I, I want to challenge you you're on your way to better days you're on your way to better days every marriage you see here by God's grace some of our people here who are gloriously married there were steps they took some of the things you are seeing here the lives that are successful in ministry by God's grace you belong to a ministry that God has helped these are the things that we do they are not what we are saying they are things that we do he said that which you have seen me do among many witnesses do also do also be serious with your life I can count the number of times you will come to my place and find me sleeping sleeping snoring any time of the day I'm awake doing something. There are sermons to prepare. There are videos to watch. I am, I am so passionate about eradicating my ignorance. So passionate. Please rise up on your feet. You're on your way to paradise. Three prayer points. Please, no moving around. We're going to pray. This is part of the meeting. I want you to pair yourselves into two and let's just take five minutes to really pray if you're married please you can hold your wife or husband or whatever and pray because this is a serious prayer we are going to pray now lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit in one minute in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will Lord I come in the volume of the book 
pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Lord, I vow, I make a covenant with my destiny. A covenant of seriousness and purposelessness. From today, I make up my mind to be serious and to be purposeful. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Young and old, male and female, those following online, I enter a covenant with my destiny. I must fulfill destiny from tonight. I decree and declare in the name of the Lord Jesus. No more joking. No more playing games in my life. Hallelujah. Please make sure you pray. Those outside, make sure you pray. Something is happening. Prayer point number two. You are going to pray and say, Lord, every knowledge I need, every light I need to prepare me for an extraordinary life, please reveal it to me. Lift your voice and pray. The information I need to light are you praying seka para to shoba la 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 ignorance financial ignorance ministerial ignorance leadership ignorance take it away from my life spiritual ignorance supernatural grace to work it out to work it out to work it out prayer point number three prayer point number three oh god the spirit of laziness and inertia that spirit that refuses me from being diligent i cost it right now with jesus name open your mouth and pray challenge laziness spiritual laziness mental laziness physical laziness wanting something for nothing I cost that spirit grace to be diligent grace to be valuable grace to invest in myself Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points. Father, destroy premature, the appetite for premature manifestation. Manifestation when I'm not ready. Destroy that appetite from my life. Lift your voice and pray. Pray. Premature manifestation in business. Premature manifestation in ministry. Premature manifestation in family life. Premature manifestation in leadership. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace to prepare like Jotham. I prepare my ways before the Lord. And so I work strong and mighty. For preparation, hallelujah! Hallelujah! The last prayer point before I pray for you the courage, the discipline, 
and the diligence to take necessary action because some of you the season you are in now is the season of action you can't prepare forever you've got to step that spirit of fear that lack of courage what will people say i'd like you to lift your voice and destroy it right now lift your voice and pray lord it's time to take action over my finances it's time to take action over family life it's time to take action in ministry the action that will move me over my career over my job it's time to take action Please lift your hands let me pray for you I want to pray for you sincerely from my heart I want you to believe it God sees my heart whom I serve and God knows that my greatest desire listen my greatest desire I have always frowned at the leadership paradigm that makes one person a superstar shining while the rest are helplessly everybody can shine it will not kill the honor of the leader if you are a true leader, even in the greatness of the people you have raised, they will honor you and give you your place. There are many leaders who are not passionate. I made a vow with God when I started ministry. When Koinonia started, I've shared it with you. I will never pastor people who are not influential. I believe you can be anointed. You can be spirit-filled. You can be responsible. You can be financially free. You can be influential and useful in the kingdom. You do not have to choose one area. You can choose everything. You don't have to choose prayer and the word and neglect responsibility. You don't have to choose excellence and responsibility and neglect the ministry of the spirit. All of them are supposed to be complementary. So all these teachings that you see, I bring them, some of the teachings are hard, but they are designed to file our lives into action. The Bible says, iron sharpeneth iron. Are we together now? So as you receive this word, don't sit down arguing it. Don't be offended by it if it strikes you. The idea is to receive it into your spirit as the word from God. And know that this is coming from a leader that is passionate about your success. If I see you today excelling and doing great things for the kingdom, it's my fulfillment. You give me money today, I'm blessed, but I mean, what do I do with that one? But if I see your life transformed, you are a great man of God doing mighty things for the kingdom. That's my source of joy. My paradigm is not outshining people and having people struggling around. And then one superstar called Joshua Selman. My desire is to be the least even among everybody rising. It still will not destroy my worth. Lift your hands. In the name that is above all names, I pray for you. The grace that God supplied in my life that granted me the discipline to prepare. I am still preparing. But the discipline to have started that journey regardless of the challenges. I pray for you. May that grace come upon your life. The spirit of indiscipline and carelessness I declare that it lives your life this night and forever. Some of you, the spirit of slumber and gluttony, food and sleep that is robbing your destiny, be free from it this night. Some of you, inferiority complex, the, the pressure to look successful, the pressure to belong, is making you to do a lot of things. You've done too many foolish things. The change comes for you now. Some of us, the pressure of association. I want to become like my friends, my contemporaries. That, that pressure to, to fit in a group that is destroying you. I command that pressure to leave you right now. For some of you, the embarrassment to start again. The embarrassment to start again. 
after life has whipped you your business may have failed your ministry may have failed your career may have failed you are um, you applied for a job you try to ask a lady out the, the the courage in the name of jesus i declare that grace for you again in the name of jesus christ i pray for you may you begin to access deeper levels of revelation may God lead you to the books may God lead you to the messages may God lead you to the conferences where your anointing and your wisdom is waiting for you in the name of Jesus Christ whatever you do not know now that is responsible for your fears responsible for your concerns I pray that the light of God's word will swallow it right now the grace to go back to your drawing board the unashamedness to carry those books you used to write in that you have thrown away those dreams you used to write in some of you had books God used to speak to you every night but just because of little results you threw them may you go back and get those books again The culture, listen, the healthy spiritual culture you observe that brought you this far, I release grace for you to continue it. Some of you, the prayer life that brought you this far, you have left it now. The word study life, the humility that brought you this far, you have left it. The sense of honor for authority that brought you this far, you have left it. Please, whatever you have left that you should not leave, I command, get back to it in the name of Jesus. I speak over your life. What has not been done in your family? The limitations that they have put and say this family cannot cross this. I prophesy to you, you are the one who will cross that barrier. In the name of Jesus. And I speak finally to everyone here who is discouraged. Drop your hands down. I'm speaking to you. There are people here who are discouraged. They're saying, Apostle, I have tried. Things are not working. As I'm standing right now, I don't even know the name of what I'm doing with my life nothing is working finances zero marriage zero school zero work zero nothing is working i feel as if i should just die i bring you a word from the lord he said is there hope for a tree right even if it be cut off he said there is hope for it at the scent of water the water of the word of god that you are hearing tonight may hope come alive I release upon you the courage some of you have thrown the button i want you to take it back and say no i will make it i will make it like an olympic person who has been handed over the battle and now you left it the problem is if you leave it all the other people who gave it to you will also be failures because of you so you have to finish it grace to finish well in the name of jesus christ now very quickly before we round up please keep standing everybody no moving around there are people here you've heard the word that i've said please keep standing everybody there are people here you have heard the word of the lord and while i was teaching listen please the holy ghost began to speak to you and said apostle is talking about you you need to make your ways right with jesus two groups in one some of you have actually made a decision for jesus at one point in your life but there is complete spiritual unseriousness and lukewarmness. Based on my definition here, you see that you are not born again. You may have come to recite a prayer, but sincerely you have not submitted to the values of the kingdom. And then there are those who have never truly made a confession for Jesus. You've been around Christian things, but as you began to hear me teach, the Spirit of God told you this is it. This is where I've been trying to lead you. You are a great man. You are a great woman. This is where I've been trying to lead you. I'm going to give you a few minutes. Our time is up and wherever you are, there are many people outside. I believe many people inside and thousands following us online. The beginning of your journey to destiny starts with an encounter with Jesus. I want you to please walk out here. Don't waste our time. No sitting and thinking about it. I want you to walk and come here and say, man of God, pray for me. I want to start all over again. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. 
I know you heard the word. I know the Holy Ghost spoke to you. Rebels don't run away from him. Rebels don't come to him, sorry. They run away from him. Keep coming. No cajoling. No cajoling. Jesus is calling you. Those outside who are waiting for you. Don't say we came with a family. They are seeing me. Tonight is nobody's business. Those online, you may not be able to walk and come here, but I guarantee you, you can open up your heart. You are about to make a decision for Jesus. He said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. I still believe there are more people. I still believe there are more people outside. There are still more people who need to make up their minds and say, Jesus, I come to you genuinely. I'm tired of faking it. I mean business with you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters. Look at me. That I'm leading you to make this decision does not mean I'm better than you in any way. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. It is a genuine decision that will begin your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Do not be ashamed. Listen, I'm serious with what I'm saying. There are still two people outside. The Holy Spirit is telling me they have to come out here. Come out. Come and join them now. Come and join them. There are still two people outside. The Holy Spirit is speaking to me. There are two people outside, 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 outside. The Holy Ghost, please don't waste our time. God is speaking to me. There are two people outside that you should come and join. I'm just giving you the word. Whether or not you come is up to you and God. But the Lord is telling me there are two people that he has spoken to them. Come and join them quickly, quickly. Now, those of you in front, listen. God bless you for your courage. Hallelujah. Listen. God does not condemn. Men condemn. Religious systems condemn. But in Koinonia, the first of our core value is love. I don't care what you have done. I don't care how bad it has been. God can give you a new beginning. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But make sure that your coming out here is not an emotional decision. The grace and the strength of God is available for you. But you must make up your mind. Lift your right hand to heaven. Jesus is here watching you. Take away Joshua Selman from your mind and see Jesus, the Lord of your life, giving you a new beginning right now. Say after me, seriously and sincerely, say, Jesus, I have come to you, the only one who can help me. This night, I hand over my life to you. I've tried managing it by myself and it has not worked. Tonight, I hand over my life to you. Be my savior, say it. Be my Lord. I receive eternal life into my spirit. And I declare that from today, I open up my heart for change. I open up my heart for transformation. I declare that I'm a child of God I am born again. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The grace of God is at work in me. Keep your hands lifted. Father, these ones have come sincerely from their heart. Some of them are crying. They have come before you, the fountain of life. Some of them are giving their hearts to Jesus for the first time. Some of them have heard me speak and they are making a genuine decision. Lord, I stretch my hands towards them. I decree and declare that the power of sin, the power of the flesh, the power of darkness is broken over their life. They have exercised their will. May your spirit find expression in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. From today, grace for you to live a victorious life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for making this great decision. I want you to follow someone. There's a gentleman waving his hands. Please, all of you in concert, just follow him. They will have their, your details and will follow you up. And then please hold on. Tuesday, on Tuesday, Tuesday this week now, please by 4 o'clock, all of you should be around for our prayer meeting at um, Rema, 4 o'clock Tuesdays. When people get born again, the system here is that you should be part of the prayer department for at least one month. It will help your spiritual life. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. Appreciate them, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge.
Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.